Ben's parents wondered if there might be a connection between mold and their child's asthma. They were concerned, and Brian was suffering. Dr. Portnoy requested Brian's family have an environmental assessment done of their home. Industrial hygienist Susan Flappen was brought in to inspect the boy's home. First, she tested the air in the basement. And right away, the findings were clear. And we found that there was stachybotrys in the air in the basement, and that the counts, the mold counts, were high in the basement. Brian's father, Stephen Chubb, was amazed at the quantity of the mold spores. When they started telling us that normal household has three to 4,000 particles of mold, and we were testing in our basement at 12,000 particles. It definitely drew our attention. The mold was growing out of control. But for Susan Flappen and health officials nationwide, the most alarming thing was that it was beginning to happen all across the country. When industrial hygienist Susan Flappen was called into one sick boy's home, she got high readings for airborne mold, but she couldn't locate the source. A lot of times there is hidden mold, and so it can be, um, you may see just a small patch of mold on, on the outside of the wall, but when you get into it, it could be a very large patch, or it could be hidden underneath the carpet, or in the ventilation system, or uh, any number of places. So this was something that we needed to investigate further. An examiner took apart the wall where Susan believed the mold might be hiding. The mold and the water was behind the wall of a finished part of the basement that you could not see. Lurking behind the finished walls of the Chubb's basement was the toxic mold stachybotrys. What you really need to do in those circumstances is try to physically remove the mold by cutting out the sheetrock, or um, if you can remove the wood, you need to, to remove it and replace it. That's really the only solution. If you can't, physically remove it, the best, and the best you can do is just to scrub it off as best as you can and seal it up. An environmental technician went to work removing it from the walls with a non-toxic cleaning agent and disinfecting the entire area. Once the cleanup was complete, Susan returned to test the air in the house for stachybotrys mold particles. The counts actually had gone from the 12,000 level to about 100, and so it had dramatically dropped. Six months after the house was cleared of mold, the child's asthma symptoms also disappeared. On the other side of town, the mold was hitting even harder. For the first time, an entire family was experiencing chronic health problems. 12-year-old Amy McGuire struggled with recurring stomach pain and high fevers. Doctors could not find the cause of her illness. For months, her mother, Julie, was alarmed. When everybody was so sick, especially Amy, I was very concerned and I was extremely frustrated because all I would hear from the doctors is, well, it's some kind of virus. It's some kind of virus. We don't know what it is. For the McGuire family, a television news segment on stacky botrys mold offered a possible clue to their chronic illness. While watching the program, they were called that a handyman remodeling the family's basement had removed an old shower and exposed a large section of wall covered with a slimy black mold. The handyman had developed respiratory problems almost immediately, and soon after, the family did too. Julie contacted the allergist interviewed in the news clip and set up an appointment. Because of her experience, Susan Flappen was called in to inspect the McGuire's basement. Although the family had cleaned the mold exposed by the shower, Sue suspected that there were traces left. She took samples for testing. 
Susan also brought a nurse to take blood samples from the entire family. She wanted to see if their blood contained traces of the stachybotrys toxins. Lab analysis of the basement samples showed that stachybotrys was in the McGuire's house. To avoid further exposure, the McGuire's had their home professionally cleaned with bleach and special filters to clean the air. Within weeks, they began to recover. While toxic mold has always been around, it is only recently that the full effects of mold are beginning to be understood. From Texas to California to Florida, there have been thousands of reported cases. Some reports say that up to 30% of U.S. homes have a mold problem, affecting as many as 26 million Americans. And yet, because the science of this mold is just in its infancy, no one knows for sure exactly how many respiratory diseases can be directly linked to stachybotrys. While our focus in Cleveland has predominantly been on the connection with young infants and their apparent vulnerability, there has been a, a beginning recognition that mold, particularly toxic molds, can be of health problems to older children and adults. And here there's a fair amount of controversy because we really don't know exactly what the health effects are. Infants in Cleveland who recovered from the possible effects of toxic mold have grown up and are now breathing easier. This entire experience changed everything on how I look at life. And now I try and take the time to sit back and enjoy life and not always be in a hurry and not always take everything for granted uh, quickly. Things that are very, very important to you um, can be taken away from you, in particular, people that you love. For those public health officials who continue to study mold, identifying stachybotrys as a possible threat is only the beginning. The success of any individual scientific discovery is whether or not we've learned something about health that is going to benefit the people. And in fact, here, I believe we've learned something that's benefited hundreds of young infants throughout the country. Today, across America, doctors and patients alike are now alerted to the potentially deadly symptoms of stachybotrys mold. While mold has always been in people's homes, even the stachybotrys mold, no one can say how widespread this problem could be. And until scientists know more, the battle against toxic mold will continue, one home at a time.